guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some engine stuff today. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about engine firing order. Uh, we've had some people ask about it. I've had a couple of personal messages, um, and I've also seen people talk about it online and such, and I thought this would be a great time to explain exactly what some of the engine firing order stuff does and how it's working inside your engine. Um, maybe uh, it'll help you decide if you're gonna, you know, change up a firing order or just understanding what firing order is. So let's dive into this. So what we have here is our engine firing order. Um, we've got a bunch of different ones on here. One eight four three six five seven two one five four two six three seven eight one eight seven two six five four three. What do all of this? What does all of this mean? Well, let's get into what all of that means and then what a firing order swap is and how everything is happening inside the engine. We're going to cover both your standard uh, Chevrolet and Mopar, which is a, uh, the standard for that is 18436572. And we're also going to cover Fords and uh, see why their firing order is different or maybe is not different. All right, let's start with what a firing order is on here. So this is a small block Chevrolet, and the firing order for this is 18436572. What that means is that is when the spark plugs are firing for each cylinder. It's gonna fire there, 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 and it knows when. This is all decided by the camshaft that's in here. So you can have a swap cam. Now let's just go over this real quick. So here's number one at the top. It's going to be a little tough to see with the camera angle, but here's one. So now that's at the top. We would have eight. Which is going to happen right here. Boom. Fire. And then it's going to come back around to four. Right here. Boom. Fire. Then three. Boom. And it's going to fire to six. So that's the next one coming up. You see how that is? Six. Boom! And it's shooting across to five. You're gonna see this one coming up. Right there, five. Boom! It's gonna shoot to seven, which is actually right next to it. We're gonna talk about that in just a little bit here. See that comes up? That's the next one, but there, boom. And then to two, which is gonna be right here. Two. Pow. And then it comes right back across to one and starts over again. Now, if we look closely when we're doing that, you can see there's always, when it's top dead center for a certain piston, there's always two of them on the engine that are at top dead center. Now, when you have two of them at top dead center at the same time, those are paired cylinders. Let's go ahead and take a look um, at a Chevrolet or Mopar that uses the same uh, cylinder offset and uh, your even numbers are on one side, odds are on the other. Let's take a look at what the cylinder pairings are in there and how that's going to come into play when you start doing firing order swaps. Okay, let's take a look at how this is set up right now and we're going to talk about our paired cylinders that we have. Right now we are at number one top dead, so number one and its paired cylinder is going to be what's at top dead over here, number six. We're going to put that here. All right, one and six. Now if we turn it over our next set which is going to be 90 degrees we have number eight and number five all right so we're gonna go like this we're gonna put five up top eight down here keep going over here oh look at that we have number seven and number four so let's go seven up on top four down below now obviously we know what's gonna be next but we have number three and number two. So, <clears throat> knowing that these cylinders are paired together and are at top dead center at the same time, we know that these are the cylinders that can have their ignition timing swapped on there. Um, the camshaft, all it's doing is it's deciding when it's opening valves and how long it's opening valves for. Okay, that's the, the basics of what a camshaft does. And now that we know what cylinders are paired together, let's look into what firing orders can, you can run and how that works on there. So let's start where we were saying before, the standard for this small block Chevrolet that we have in front of us is 18436572. So let's write it right here, 
four, three, six, five, seven, two. Okay. <clears throat> Knowing what we know now, a common deal that many people have heard of, if you haven't, a four, seven swap is a very common uh, firing order swap to have in a Chevrolet engine. And we can see that's because those two are on top dead center at the same time. So what they're basically doing is on your four stroke is your intake, and then you have compression, and then you have a power stroke where it's not the power on there, and then it has exhaust on there. And all we're doing is changing when those are. So uh, four and seven being together, we're going to uh, swap when uh, with each other when it has its compression and exhaust strokes and everything like that. They're just changing with each other on there. Okay, so we know we can swap these two, but it looks like we could also swap, if we wanted to, we could swap three and two, or five and eight, or one and six. Now, we, that means we could have a one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. We can change this to a... That works, because we all we've done is swap four and seven on there, or we could go to the modern LS and LT engine. Now what did they do there? They swapped both the 4, 7, and the 3 and the 2 on there. That's what's happening inside there. Now let's look at exactly how it works out and why you would want to do this. Is it just we're just we're just swapping stuff so it sounds different, or are we swapping stuff for a specific reason on there? Um, it could be an intake pulse charge, it could be an exhaust pulse charge on there, or maybe it has to do with the bearings and how everything is firing on top of the bearings for bearing load inside the engine. Let's go ahead and draw this out. Now let's take a look at exactly what's happening inside the engine when we change firing orders or when we have a standard firing order. We still have our paired cylinders here and we have our firing orders. These are again for a GM or Mopar on there. So let's go ahead and draw this out. We're gonna use a different color so that way it's a little bit easier to see. If we go with our standard on here, we go one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, and then we start all over again. Okay, so let's take a look at that one more time. You have one all up here and that jumps all the way down to eight on the other side, other side of the engine, rear of the engine. So you're going front of the engine to the rear of the engine. Okay. Then we go four, which is going to be on the same side. So it's jumping up to four, goes right across to three, goes over to six, goes over to seven, or it goes over to six, goes over to five, jumps down to seven, jumps all the way across again to two, and then back over and starts its cycle again. Now that's on our standard firing order that they've had for many, many years since the, the 50s and 60s on there. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. But let's take a look at what happens if we do a four, seven swap, or even if we go to the LS camshaft. So let's see what happens when we change the firing orders to a four, seven swap or a four, seven and two, three swap or the LS or LT firing order on there. So we left this here. We can see what's happening inside when everything is firing on there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Uh, I wrote them down here just because it's a little bit easier to, re to remember. There's a lot of numbers here. So uh, we're going from one, eight. Now we've swapped, so it's going seven, three, six, five, four, two, and then back over. Well, what can we see from from this is we don't have the two giant jumps where it comes oh, where it comes from one down to eight and seven to two. So that's going to even everything out in the engine on there, so it doesn't have all this jumping around from harmonics or firing or pressures from up here, then to back here, and then doing all of this, and then going here and here. Uh, those those big jumps on there can cause some issues on bearing wear uh, or how it's hitting a crank where it could you know hurt a crank quicker on there especially with high loads of you know boosted applications or anything like that so now let's take a look at the next one and then we'll analyze all three together so now we've swapped uh, four and seven and three and two on here so if we go one eight seven Two, we have that big jump back again. And jump to 
six, five, four, three, and then back to one on there. Now we have those big jumps again on here, if you see that, um, that the one to eight and the seven to two, since we have swapped things around on there. But we have a lot of firing right here in the middle. Everything's happening here. You have this two down to six on there, where it's gonna fire, keep everything in there, then it keeps everything in the center on there which is very, very interesting to have everything in the center, you know, on there. Now in our own uh, Hemi, um, boosted Hemi car that's behind us there, um, we run a 4.7 swap on that. We run it right here, just like that, where everything's kind of firing in the middle a little bit more, but we got rid of that big jump. And that's what we, we really wanted to do is get rid of that big jump. So we're using more of it for the intake charge and when it's pulling everything like that on there. but. This is going to be, you know, your basic stuff. Now let's go ahead and look at the Fords. And we'll leave the standard GM up here. And we're gonna compare what happens on a Ford and how their number or their cylinder numbering is slightly different. And how when they change things, does it do the exact same thing as the Chevrolet or is it completely different? So we have everything set up for Ford firing orders. Now Ford, as you can see from here to here, they change their, or I shouldn't say they change. They have a different firing order and cylinder numbering on there, okay? So like GM on one side has one, three, five, seven, and two, four, six, eight. Ford on the other hand, their number one cylinder is on the other side because that's the one that's set forward on the block. And they have one, two, three, four, and then the other side, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> so if we take this one here, this is our Ford 302 standard firing order. Um, let's go ahead and have a look at what happens to the firing order for standard. And then they have their Ford 302 HO, high output um, firing order. That's also what's used on like the three, uh, 351 Windsors, um, I believe the Cleveland uses the same one. Um, and then uh, depending on your camshaft and what years and things like that, the FE Fords also use that. So let's go ahead and take a look exactly what happens here. So uh, if we go one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight is the standard on there. So one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight and it jumps all the way back up to one so let's take a look at what happens over here in the ho okay so we can see they changed a bunch on there but what actually happens up on here? So one three seven two six five four eight and all the way up to one. Oh my golly that looks like it's an ls so did the ls copy the ford 302 ho or is it, there's only so much you can do on a firing order to swap things around. You know, we, we talked about our paired cylinders before and we change on here a two and a three and a four and a seven, but we know that, um, you know, one and uh, six were also paired and, you know, all those were paired, but they're not changing those around. Why on there? Um, well, because it's going to make it run like crap. They've tried all of this. They've tried moving everything around, um, and, and that's just how it works out there. So uh, thank you again for uh, for tuning in. Hope you had uh, a little bit of enjoyment here and uh, have some more knowledge. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, we're going to do a couple more of these uh, explaining some engine stuff uh, and uh, some suspension parts uh, besides just doing our Bad Influence build series on there. So uh, thank you, and uh, until next time, be safe. We'll be